At the end of 2023, I tested this Intel Arc A750 and I concluded if you wanted to play newer games, it's a decent value graphics card. However, I didn't test it for long enough to gauge the stability of the Intel Arc drivers and that changes today as I'm daily driving my Arc A750 in my main PC for the whole of January. This is my current editing and gaming PC and I literally do everything on this PC from video editing, photo editing, business admin like emails and Microsoft Excel and that sort of stuff and most importantly, depending on who you ask, gaming. The GPU I used to have in here was an RTX 3080 10 gigabyte, and truth be known for my gaming needs, that GPU was insanely overkill and even probably for my workflow the RTX 3080 was very powerful. But I felt like taking a bit of a risk, so I put this RK750 in my main PC for the whole of January, where it will stay in there until at least the 31st, and maybe it might even stay in there longer if I deem it to be good enough. And I wanted to do this just to see what the Intel Arc drivers are like now. Are they quite stable now, as they probably should be after Intel's had more than a year to make them stable, but are there any sort of quirks or any sort of weird behaviors which will happen on an Intel GPU and they might not happen on, let's say, an Nvidia or an AMD graphics card? These are the things that I wanted to find out. Yes, I know it's a bit of a downgrade for my RTX 3080, well, it's quite a big downgrade of more than 50% of a loss in gaming performance. However, that is a sacrifice I'm willing to take in the name of science and journalism. So in the box, my RTX 3080 goes for the whole of January and into my PC goes the Arc A750. As of recording, it is the 1st of January, so it has been in my PC for not even one day and there are no major issues as of yet. There's a few minor ones which, to be fair, they don't really get in the way of things, but they are kind of annoying. The main one is I can't change the RGB dynamic range of my second monitor as it's stuck to limited. This is a setting I could have easily have changed in the NVIDIA control panel and probably it's in the AMD control panel as well, but there's no option for it in the ARC command center which I think is quite annoying. I'm not a graphics driver developer or anything like that, but it doesn't seem like it's too hard to implement. Another issue which I faced was poor YouTube playback on my second monitor. When YouTube was playing on my main monitor, there were no issues with playback. It would play back a 4K 60 FPS YouTube video just fine. But on my second monitor, even at 1080p, it would just slow down and just freeze. And I know it's not down to my internet as I've got a gigabit line, so it's got to be down to the Intel Arc drivers or maybe an issue with Chrome. I don't know if this is Intel Arc or MSI Afterburner, but for some reason my Arc A750 doesn't hook into MSI Afterburner. And this is kind of annoying as this is the program which I use to overclock my graphics card and I undervolt it there as well. And I use it along with Reva Tuner to monitor my graphics card's performance. This isn't too much of a problem because I can just use HW Monitor instead. So this is a fairly minor problem. Other than these fairly minor issues, I've had no issues so far. I've had no blue screens, no random crashes or anything like that. It's been rock solid stable to be fair. Looking at gaming performance, and I've only tested a handful of games, but Minecraft Java Edition ran totally fine. And truth be known, if it was running side by side with my RTX 3080, and the RK750, I probably wouldn't tell a difference if the FPS counter was turned off. And I've also tested Battlefield 1 on DirectX 12 and that ran totally fine apart from the fact that I was losing performance compared to my RTX 3080, which is a good sign because the RTX 3080 is in a totally different performance bracket to the RK750. Lastly, I tested Assassin's Creed Origins, which runs on DirectX 11, and there were weird frame pacing issues in this game, especially in Memphis and Alexandria. But other than that, there were no issues at all. I was averaging around 60 to 70 frames per second and the game felt totally fine, apart from the frame pacing issues. As for video editing, I don't have that much experience with the RK750 in Adobe Premiere Pro right now, but I have edited some short form content which uses iPhone 4K footage and playback was totally fine, but the rendering did feel a bit longer than the RTX 3080. But to be fair, this is what I want. I want smooth timeline performance and the rendering it doesn't really matter to a certain extent. So performance in Premiere Pro so far 
is pretty decent. And that brings me on to my further testing. I especially want to test DirectX 9 games as apparently these titles do give ARC graphics cards quite a bit of a run for their money. So I want to see what performance is like in these titles. Apparently DXVK, which essentially translates DirectX to Vulkan and Vulkan runs quite well on Intel ARC GPUs, does help out a lot in these titles. So I will be doing a content piece to showcase the results of that. And if you want me to test a specific DirectX 9 game, make sure you comment it down below or let me know on X or Twitter or whatever it's called now. And I'll be sure to try and take a look at some of them games. As for video editing and content creation, that will be a bit more subjective. I will report back with how well this GPU handles Sony 4K 10-bit 42 footage, which is coming out of my Sony A7 Mark IV. And let me tell you this, it is very beefy footage going up to 500 megabits per second. So it will give the RK750 a good run for its money. However, I think this GPU will handle it just fine as Intel's pretty much got the encoding and decoding pretty much nailed at this point, thanks to their developments with the iGPUs in their processors like Intel QuickSync. I'm going to be documenting every quirk which I think is related to this Intel Arc GPU, whether it's major or minor, and hopefully I'll be able to pass these on to the Arc driver development team where they can improve the drivers thanks to my feedback. And I think that would be quite cool to do. Imagine that I've actually helped Intel in a way which has improved their products. I think that would be a pretty big achievement. But despite that, if Intel Arc GPUs are better, that is good for the entire GPU market. That means us gamers and content creators have more options to choose from and a third competitor in this space is absolutely great because that means more competition and ultimately the consumer wins when that happens. I know a lot of other tech creators have tried using Intel Arc GPUs for 30 days, so what I'm doing here isn't necessarily a new topic. However, I just wanted to see for myself what are they like to daily drive for at least a month, because it will enable me to form a conclusion of where these cards excel and where they are leaving a little more to be desired, and I could potentially help out Intel to make Intel Arc GPUs a stronger graphics card and make them a bit more of a compelling option. Right then, for the rest of this month, it's time to use my PC as I do normally. So that's working hard and playing hard, Intel Arc drivers willing. So if you wanted to see how an Arc A750 plays some games at both 1080p and 1440p, there is a video right there for that. And there's another GPU video up here if you fancy that one more. If you got this far into the video, I'd like to say thank you for sticking around this long. And if you really like the video, consider leaving the video a like. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one and have a good rest of your day.